I hope you can hear us now. We've had some te technical difficulties here at the Low House. It's good to be seen by you. I guess I can't see you. But uh, we're very thankful that we have an opportunity to share. Tomorrow was supposed to be the day that we were to have the seminar on how to do a personal testimony. But now with the corona quarantine, we are not able to do that. But that doesn't mean we're without options on uh, ways that we can prepare to reach out to neighbors, friends, and others. And uh, <clears throat> so in, I'd like to, nowadays, it seems like as we look on the media, the TV, internet, and so forth, people are, are really, uh, a lot of confusion and fear. And uh, sometimes I, one of the things people have talked about is families who are weak are having to spend two weeks together which may make their weakness much worse and marriages may suffer. And uh, so there's a lot of options. And I think we're in a position to help a lot of people if we can take advantage of this opportunity. I wanted to share a little story with you about something our daughter Susanna experienced. And I'll, I'll let Becky talk about that. And I'm sorry, we're gonna have to shift this. You know what, I don't need the earphone. I just need you to talk. To talk. Um, anyway, our daughter called and she has uh, two roommates. One is a Christian, one is a non-Christian. But she said, I have never been around a non-Christian in a living situation to see up close just how different they respond to crisis. And of course, every person is different. But she said, as a believer, even though I may get stressed out and scared, I have that confidence that the Lord is there and he's in control. But she said, my roommate is just devastated by this whole coronavirus thing. She doesn't have any, you know, foundation for stability or for hope and it's just really made my daughter grateful for what she does have but also given her a greater compassion for people who don't have that yeah thanks for being patient with us as we share this microphone uh, but like I said we do have some options and before we look at some of them I thought we'd look at scripture together and uh, since my Bible is on this computer I hope you don't go away when I when I pull it up, uh, let's see here. Oh, do you just want me to do it on my Bible? Okay, my wife will read it for us. Is that okay with all of you? Okay. She's got a much nicer voice than I do. Why don't you tell her? In 1 Peter 3, 13 through 17. <clears throat> so if you'd like to open your Bibles there, maybe that will help you follow along. We're, we're very high tech in this family, so you'll, you're, I'm sure you're being okay, impressed this very moment. Okay, Becky. Okay, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it's better to suffer for doing good if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. So, uh, this is a great passage, and uh, it's actually, especially for us, it's a passage about hope and the opportunities it opens up. The Peter, Peter's audience were uh, believers who were beginning to experience uh, persecution and mistreatment. I don't think it was very bad yet, but they were beginning to experience it, and I think in a situation like that, it would probably be very normal to feel fearful and confused and wondering what God's doing. So Peter is admonishing them to stand firm, to not be uh, troubled by the intimidation they feel, and not to fear. And then he tells them to sanctify Christ as Lord in your heart, so that you may give a defense of the hope that you have. And what a great statement that is. To sanctify means to set him apart, put him as first priority, make him number one. That means we trust him with uh, uh, his providence and his guidance and his protection, even in difficult times. And so they were being told that the hope that they express as they trust him would probably create opportunities for people to wonder why on earth these people were so hopeful at a time when they ought not to be hopeful. Sounds a little bit like our time, though we're not being persecuted. There are some guidelines, uh, uh, if I can talk to the method in some sense. Uh, and I'm, again, I don't have it open in front of me, so I'm going to look at my wife's Bible. 
But the guidelines are to, be, to do this with gentleness and reverence or respect and with a good conscience. And the, the, these are self-explanatory, though the good conscience is one that we might want to say something about. A good conscience does not mean a perfect Christian life. It means a Christian life where you walk with God, and when you fall, you get back up. You confess, you, you deal with broken relationships, whatever it is. So it doesn't mean you have to be living a perfect Christian life to be a witness for Jesus. Also, I'd point out that even though here he says to be prepared to give a defense, uh, he doesn't mean that you can't talk about the gospel unless somebody asks you. The circumstances in Peter's epistle are unique. These people are put in a situation where they have to express, they express their hope through their trust in Christ and people are going to notice it and they're going to respond. Now, this may be true of us as we contact our friends, but certainly we don't have to wait to be asked. <clears throat> but we do have some suggestions for, for everyone that you might want to take to mind, and we're going to post these on the internet here, and if I can figure out how to do it in just a moment, on the Community Bible Church page. But I'd like Becky to share them with you. Uh, the first thing that we were thinking is just make opportunities of the people that you do have any interaction with. And of course, it feels like we don't have any interaction at all right now, but there's the mailman who comes, there are people who uh, maybe you have delivered groceries. I'll tell you a quick example. Last week, well, I guess this week on Monday week. or Tuesday, Monday, I guess. Seems like two weeks. Yeah, it does seem like <laughs> a long time. Uh, I bought a little thing online, and I told the girl, if you want to drop by my house, I'll, you know, leave the money out on the mailbox. And so she, and you can just leave it on the porch. So she came, she dropped it on the porch, and I left a little um, note out there with her name on it so she could pick it up. Well, in the note, it just crossed my mind. I'd, I'd like to say something that would be encouraging. And so I put a couple of Bible verses. And one I put was, you know, here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and gave his son to be the atoning sacrifice for us. Uh, half an hour later, I got a text from this girl. I don't know who she is. I've never met her in my life. But she said, I'm sitting here in tears. That was so exactly what I needed to read right now. And she shared some problems that she's having, some health issues, some problems with her marriage. And she just became a Christian in January. And so she's a baby Christian, and God used that to minister to her. And she said, feel free to you know, share anything else you want with me. <laughs> so we've actually been texting back and forth this week, even though we've never met. So make the most, I also read that, uh, a, a thing by a mailman who said he felt totally paranoid because he's touching everybody's mail and doesn't have gloves or anything. So the most of you know people who do come by, maybe leaving little notes or things for them when you pay or when you give a tip. I've also, I haven't done this yet. It's one of the things on my to-do list. I have a million Facebook friends that I haven't talked to in forever. And so I'm wanting to set aside a specific time every day just to contact one or two Facebook friends from the olden days, ask how they're doing with the coronavirus, uh, just find out how they're doing. And I think probably a lot of us have non-Christians that we do have that connection with that we haven't really talked to very much. And that leads into maybe you would want to kind of write up a little short testimony that you could use in your social media to share how you're dealing with this particular crisis. So, for example, uh, you know, you don't want to come across as preachy, but you could say, you know, I've been really tempted to, well, for me, I've been tempted to feel fearful, and so I've had to turn off, you know, the news and not watch the news so much. But at the same time, I have confidence because da-da-da-da-da, and maybe share just a few lines about your confidence that you have in Christ. That's something you could do in a message, or you could even make it your Facebook post. The other thing that we wanted to mention was the app Nextdoor. If you don't have Nextdoor on your phone, you need to download it right now and sign up. Uh, and sign up. It's free. It's a way to connect with neighbors. And you can learn everything. Actually, the thing I bought was secondhand from one of my neighbors. But uh, there are a million different topics, and I came across someone who had um, mentioned something about prayer, and I thought, oh, that's a good idea. <clears throat> and so I posted on there just a little uh, 
thing about, you know, my husband and I are in the high risk category, so we can't volunteer to get your groceries, but we would love to pray for you if you have a prayer request. You can send a private message or you can, uh, you know, you can contact us here on next door. Uh, I did that this morning, actually. It just, we came up with the idea. But today, we've already had 26 people thank us, and I've had 10 personal messages on next door. Every response has been positive. I think people are really open right now because they're, they're nervous and they're scared. But that gives us an opportunity to tell them we're praying for you. And then also, we can, you know, we can send back a little uh, short message to them. Um, also, whenever you're on, online, reading articles or whatever you're doing, it's always a good idea to give a little Christian perspective in the comments. If you scroll down to the comment section, you don't want to do anything, you know, rabid or unkind, even if it kind of gets under your skin. But we can shed light that way by, by posting comments. The people who don't know God are certainly going to, you know, post their things. But for us to put a scripture verse or just to give a, a warm, positive Christian response, I think could be a real witness. And the last thing we talked about was actually something our neighbor has done for us. Every holiday, uh, she has little kids, and her little kids come down and leave a message on our door. And it's usually a homemade card, and it has maybe one or two her she kisses with it. But why can't we do that for our neighbors? You know, maybe just a little greeting card or thinking about you today or you know, something like that. Maybe put a little you know, homemade thing that you use gloves or something to put in the bag. <laughs> but anyway, I think that there are ways that we can do. These are things we've been thinking about. We'd like to know what you think. So if you have some things you've tried, put it in the comments so everybody can, can benefit from things you've tried in connecting with people during this time. Great. Thank you, Becky. And, uh, Please remember that when you do these things, you don't you don't need to be preachy. You need to be pastoral. Just you're sharing. You're a neighbor. You're sharing, and uh, let's see how God uh, works, and uh, then you can respond back to the people who respond to you. Uh, one other thing, uh, we're also going to post on the Facebook, the church Facebook page, guidelines for writing your personal salvation testimony, which is what we were planning to do tomorrow morning. You might want to look those over and uh, begin working on it, and if uh, if we're allowed to do it again, maybe next week we can have another session and talk more about that. So God bless you all. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy your spouses and your kids and a few Netflix binge times. Okay? God bless.